sometimes. Um, Diane, what is your morning routine and how do you put all of these tactics that you recommend together all at once so I don't have to remember to do all these things that are healthy for me all throughout the day? So here it is on one slideshow. Okay, first and foremost, I wake up in the morning and I promise this will save you time. All of the tactics I'm talking about today. So wake up in the morning, I drink one of these. This is about 28 ounces. One of these, just full of water. That's the first thing I do before I wake up out of, uh, get up out of bed in the morning. Um, and actually, sometimes I don't have enough, so I just fill it up downstairs. Um, second thing that I do is actually here, and this is neti pot. Um, side note, as I'm drinking my water, I'm taking things like my probiotics, which are best first thing in the bed on an empty stomach. A lot of us don't um, go to bed with an empty stomach, so first thing in the morning is a better time to do probiotics. At least 10 billion um, CFUs and uh, ideally 10 different strains. If, um, I'm not going to get into all the science, but that's the ideal. If you're going to take a probiotic, make sure it's 10 billion CFUs or more. Um, and then the other thing that I do with this neti pot is I add the Neomed Sinostrans. So many of you have um, probably seen these at the grocery store. If any one of you is having problems with your sinuses or allergies or a number of different things throughout the body, digestion is related to sinus, then neti pot is your answer. You don't have to do this every single morning, although it is ideal. It only takes about a minute to do. So this is my neti pot. Neil Med also has one that you can spray up your nose, um, but this one I tend to like a little bit better because it's not done with force. Now I want you to see how this works because not everybody knows what to do, and I've done this before at a lot of the wellness workshops. I show people how to do this. So make sure first that your hair is out of the way. Um, I have reverse osmosis at my house. If you can get distilled water um, is best. If you don't, if the best thing you could do is filtered water, that's great. But just do note not tap water because tap water has a bunch of um, different compounds in it that are they can get lodged up into our brain and cause damage. So um, not to scare you or anything, but just try to get the cleanest water possible and then add one of the little packets to here. I have heated this up so it's about 98 degrees, which is body temperature, and that's what you want for coffee enemas as well um, when you're administering those. Back there, as you can see, I have a pot. I'm also at the same time simultaneously making my coffee enema mix for the week. So I'm doing a bunch of things all at one time. This is how it's gonna save you guys time. I'm preparing my juice, my, my um, veggies for the week, cleaning them, so that's what's next. But first, this is what neti potting looks like. And I know people are gonna think it looks sort of funny, but you hold it up to one of your nostrils on your first side, and it just tilt. So see how that going on the back, I'm actually just tilting to the side. You can see that here. I know it looks super funny, but you're gonna have uh, some that come out and you switch to the other side. I should put my hair back on a ponytail. So the other side. And you make sure that you keep the back of your throat closed. This does take practice. It took me about three or four times to finally get it. So the back of my throat is closed and then you're done. And make sure you have a tissue handy because you're certainly going to have to blow a lot of things is gonna come out. Um, people who I've recommended this to and they've done it, they've, they've actually said it was their saving grace because they were sneezing all weekend or they felt congested or they had maybe one too many drinks over the weekend or maybe you were camping and a bunch of dirt and dust. So um, that's it, that's neti pot. Okay, that one's aside. And then the next thing that I do um, every morning I take my isotonic supplements. These are bio, uh, or these are 95% absorbable by the, by the body as opposed to pills, which you only absorb about 30%. These as well as other supplements I take, um, these are just for like my multi, my B complex so that you could help um, to digest the foods more properly and what's called methylation. Okay, so I drink that. That's the next thing that I do. That's my vitamins. Now, because this is a morning where I've just recently gone shopping for all of my veggies, this is... What, oop, I'm dripping a little bit. This is a beet. <laughs> this is a beet. And right now I'm gonna, no, I'm not gonna beat it. I got these at the um, farmer's market, um, actually Sprouts Farmer's Market, not a local farmer's market, even though that's where I recommend you buy most of your um, fruits and veggies at local farmer's market. So they come in these little baggies when you go to the store, you put them in baggies. And one of the main reasons you wanna wash these off is, first of all, these are, um, grown underground so they sell some dirt on them but because bpa leaches onto the vegetables and the fruits when they're in their bags until you eat them so i'm going to, going to put all of my vegetables for the week for juicing into the little strainer and i'm going to add vegetable wash that's what this is this is from trader joe's i think it was like three dollars probably you could also kind of make your own little um cleanser your vegetable cleanser out of uh 
um, what do you call it? I'm gonna get the little bottle for you. It's like um, peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, the 2% kind, and you can just use that too. I'm gonna blow my nose. Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to rinse off my vegetables here and the amount that you want to use to clean your veggies is just tiny. So like, so you can kind of see how much drops. Oops. That's about all that you need. It's just probably about like, I'd say a teaspoon or so. And you just uh, drizzle that over your vegetables. Here's what I want to stress with veggies and your, your prep for the week. So here I have three beets. This is um, three juices worth because I use one full beet for each juice. I wanted to stress this. Here's my cucumbers. My favorite thing is beets, cucumbers, apples, parsley, ginger, and lemon. That's my favorite thing. Don't juice the same thing every single morning because you can actually create a food tolerance and insensitivity. One thing I'm playing with right now is, um, is when I did my food sensitivity test, I came up reactive to um, ginger. And ginger is um, something that I just absolutely adore for digestion. And you guys know the medicinal benefits of ginger, right? So um, when I do ginger every single morning, potentially what I've done is I've created my own food insensitivity from eating the same thing over and over again. So what that's going to do is the food sensitivity in your body, it causes internal inflammation and inflammation is the root cause of all disease. So keep it variable. Um, I didn't and I learned this the hard way. So uh, sometimes the things that we're responsive to, it's a dose dependency thing. So sometimes in small amounts, it doesn't cause inflammation. And sometimes in larger amounts, like I experienced one time, and back when I didn't know it was ginger, sometimes in larger amounts, it's really gonna make it known. So um, I say not to even test it um, in, in the first three months of trying out your food sensitivities and exploring that. And then after three months, you try to reintroduce the foods that came up positive on your food sensitivity test. I run those and I help uh, my clients interpret those. So you can check that out on the services tab of my website. And I actually offer a steep discount, like $300 cheaper than what you would pay at another, like a naturopath office or something. So that's pretty awesome. Diane Kayser bringing to you more money saving tips. Okay, so um, I'm going to fast forward through this so you guys don't have to watch me wash all my vegetables. But again, here's what are the, one of the crucial things when you're juicing. Avoid cutting these. A lot of people cut their veggies um, before, like days before they, they juice. And they do that because they think they're being efficient. But the moment that you cut those suckers open the, is the, the moment that they start their die-off process. And you don't want that. You want them to be whole. Try to use these vegetables. Ideally, as soon as when you buy them, but within a week is cool. So I'm going to clean all these veggies and I'll get right back to you. Okay guys, here everything is. So I've got my parsley. This is about how much parsley I use. It's like a tiny little bunch. Um, I have one beet and I keep all of the stems on because that's where most of the nutritional value is. A tiny little thumb of ginger. And again, I'm playing with this to see if um, my food insensitivity is on the high or low side with garlic, but I, I'm just playing here. Um, and I just listen to my body. This is the apple all sliced up. And then the cucumbers. I had sliced this one into thirds so it would fit a little bit better. I have one last thing, which is my lemon. And I've taken the peel off of this. So the rind is actually where a lot of people say a lot of the nutritional value is in the, the lemons. And I do have a great cleanse recipe on my website um, that you can try that, that uses the entire lemon, including the pith and the ex exterior, and, and as well as cayenne pepper and some uh, clove. So that's really good. I, I, I've seen great benefits from that. Some things have come out of me that I've needed to detox. But case um, point to take is that all of these, because I'm eating the skin of them, with the exception of the lemon, all of these are organic. So whenever you're eating the skin of something, make sure you buy organic. And I have a video also on my YouTube channel on how to save money buying organic and what top 10 things that you need to buy organic if you're going to eat them. Actually, it's called the Dirty Dozen, so it's like the top 12 things. So not everything you need to buy organic because this lemon I'm not eating the the the, um, the exterior of. I didn't buy it organic just to save money, but if you can, all organic is good. 
Okay, so now let's get into the juicing. This is what it looks like. I want you guys to see for some of you new juicers. This is about as good of an angle that I can get with this. And here's my, this is my Breville. So this is what it looks like. Oh, let me close that window. Okay, so that should be better. Now, this is a multi-component juicer. And so this thing has already been put together. Here is what it looks like. I'm turning this on, it's gonna get loud. That's it. It's probably, what, that, was that a minute? And so once the machine turns off, this is a Breville. Um, this is the Breville. I can't remember which model is that this is, but I'll write it on the bottom for you and on the notes. It was like 200 bucks, I think, on Amazon. It was really cheap. And it's easy to do. It's very one of the most easiest things to clean of all the juicers I've used. And this is it. So as you can see here, this makes about 20 ounces of juice, and it's going to fit into my glass. So I'm going to pour myself some juice and maybe next time you and I can juice together <laughs> but this is what I do every morning not it, it sometimes people think it can be time consuming to juice but I do this and I multitask at the same time what I'd like to recommend to you is if it's quiet in the house and you're juicing in the morning get your iPhone out or your smartphone and listen to my podcast in the fire, in the fire.